Yes. Um, I agree a lot with what you say about humanitarian policy at home, but I don't see the practical application of a libertarian president in the United States. I, don't, I think it would be too much of a shock for the entire world to have one of the greatest countries ever to change in such a radical way. And, you know, the American way is, is such a balance. You say the Constitution is, you know, we should go back to what the Constitution said. Well, they, they had no idea what, what they were getting into. They, they left some room for growth. But they had no idea what would happen. And I, I just don't see the practical application of a libertarian president. Okay, but they really didn't leave room to destroy the principle of freedom, you know, the concept of individual rights and the purpose of government. Uh, you say it would be a radical change. I think the extremists are in government. How can you say somebody who wants a balanced budget is a radical extremist and wants these radical changes when we get a conservative president that gives us triples the national debt in six years and runs up a deficit in one year of $220 billion? That, to me, is extremism and is very dangerous. You say, well, they might not be able to accept these changes from the status quo, which I would grant there would be some changes. But, but you shouldn't compare that to the problems of, uh, of accepting these changes. You ought to compare it to what it's like when all the people of this country get a social security check and it doesn't buy anything. Look at what happens when you have inflation of 20 or 30 or 40 percent in a year. There are unemployment rates at 25 percent. That's what you have to compare it to. We have to prevent these great problems coming by offering up sound economic policies. So I, I think the real calamity is not doing anything. Yes, there's going to be adjustments, but it's sort of like you telling me that the, uh, the drug addict doesn't want to get off drugs because he gets sick, he gets uncomfortable, and you know, it's not, he doesn't feel good when he's trying to get off drugs. Certainly he doesn't feel good. And the economy is not going to feel real good when you quit feeding at deficits financing and inflation. But what happens to the drug addict if he doesn't stop? He dies. And that's the kind of a system we have here today. Now, if you say that that's all poppycock, if you say, no, I don't agree with that, we have a healthy economy, and you believe that nonsense of the supply-siders, then you just sit back and forget about it because everything is going to be okay. Instead of this being something threatening, to me, I see this as conciliatory and the only compromise that can work. Let me make, give you an example. The uh, Democrats and the Republicans are always arguing about the budget deficits, and they always get together because they both endorse government spending. One for big business and military industrial complex, the other for poor man's welfare. And they get together and they always raise both. I mean, that always happens. It never really gets cut. The libertarian is the only one that has a reasonable chance of going to the conservative and say, you know, I do support you. I think you're on the right track on free enterprise and that welfare is out of control. And I can go to the liberal and say to the liberal, yes, I agree with you. There's too much spending in the Pentagon. So I can bring these people together where the conservative and the liberal, all they're going to do is bicker, and they're going to raise it. And I'm also convinced for the, what I've stated earlier that uh, under the system of non-intervention, you're less likely to have, uh, have war and conflict.